Number 26. A ball is kicked with an initial velocity of 16 meters per second in the horizontal direction and 12 meters per second in the vertical direction. At what speed does the ball hit the ground? All right, so first let's take a look at that. So we have, um, let's just draw a coordinate system quickly. So we've got the Y coordinate and the X coordinate. And now let's draw the uh, X and Y components of the vector. So they said it's initially kicked with a 16 meter per second horizontal direction. So let's just represent that as this. Great. So this is going to be the 16 meters per second. And then they said that um, it is also launched in a vertical direction, right, of 12 meters per second. So that's going to look something like this, straight on up. And that'll be 12, let me give myself a little more space, 12 meters per second. Okay, now it says, at what speed does the ball hit the ground? So just thinking about this though, right, the, the resultant vector should look something like this, right? It, it's an object being launched at an angle. But it, it really doesn't matter uh, for this problem uh, because they want to know how, at what speed does the ball hit the ground. So you have to think, if the ball is in the air, right, and then it's going to come back down, it's going to hit the ground with some particular um, a velocity, right? So actually, nah, I, miss, I may have misinterpreted it slightly in the beginning. I thought they just wanted to know what vertical distance, but they don't. They want to know what speed does the ball hit the ground with. So uh, the speed actually that they're looking for is they're looking for the initial, well, they're looking for the final velocity. Okay, that's what they're looking for. But in order to find the final velocity in this problem, we have to know the initial velocity. And we have to know the initial velocity of the resultant vector. Okay, so in other words, um, if this is my x component, and I'm just going to shift my um, y component to this side. I know they're different heights, but I'm, this drawing is not to scale. But let's just assume that this is the 12 now meters per second. Notice how I created a nice triangle, and I want to find now the initial velocity here. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, I, I know two sides, and I have to find the third, so simple Pythagorean's theorem, right? So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, so we got 16 squared plus 12 squared is equal to c squared. So let's just do 16 squared plus 12 squared. That works out to 400. So 400, I don't know what number that is. <laughs> so 400 is equal to c squared. Take the square root of both sides to get rid of the square. And now c is equal to 20 meters per second. Okay, so if this is the, that what this represents is this represents that the initial velocity here is 20 meters per second. That is the resultant vector. Now, here's the thing. There's no, um, outside forces except for gravity that's acting on the ball, uh, right? So there's no wind resistance or anything like that. So what we do know about this is that whatever velocity the ball left with will be the same exact velocity that the ball hits the ground with, assuming that the heights of both are the same. So if it leaves, you know, the ground at this height, it better, you know, hit the ground at that same height um, over here. Uh, which it does, right? It, there's nothing in the problem that leads me to believe that it does not. So therefore, I do know my final velocity. They're going to be the same. As the, it's going to be the same as the initial. So my final velocity here would be 20, point zero, uh, 20 meters per second. That's the velocity it hits the ground with. So that takes care of letter A. Now let's take a look at uh, letter B. So letter B now says, how long does the ball remain in the air? Now this question is a little tricky, okay? Remember, in order to solve most of these problems, we're gonna to have to break things down into the components. They did that for us already, right? They told us that the initial velocity in the x direction is 16, and they told us that the initial velocity in the y direction is 12. So in order to find the ball, the time the ball's in the air, we actually have to use y components to solve for this. All right, so for letter B, let's list all the y components that we know. All right, we know the initial velocity in the y direction is equal to 12 meters per second. We also know that the 
ball, when it lands, since it lands at the same height, the final velocity will also be the same, all right? But it will have a um, different sign. And the reason why it will have a different sign is because it's traveling now downwards. So it's negative 12 meters per second. Um, you might also be asking, well, wait a minute. If this initial velocity was positive, then why did I make the final velocity also positive? Isn't it kind of coming down? It is, but it's, it's coming down at an angle. It's not perfectly up and down. So therefore, I can't call it negative or positive. I would actually have to give an angle. And uh, it doesn't say, it just asks us for the speed. So in case you were thinking that, hopefully that helps. Um, what is the acceleration in the Y-frame? Well, that's negative 9.80, right? Because it's in free fall. So that's, and, and gravity acts in the Y direction. How long is it in the air? Well, that's what we're trying to find, right? And do we also know how high it goes? I'm just gonna call that Y. Do we know how high that goes? No, okay. So how can I solve for time given these three variables? Well, looks like I can use the first formula right at the top right. So I got the final velocity in the y direction should equal the initial velocity in the y direction plus the acceleration in the y direction times time. I could say time in the y direction, but time in the y is the same as time in the x, so I don't even have to do that. So the final velocity here is negative 12. The initial velocity is 12. The acceleration is negative 9.80 times t. So subtract the 12 on over, right? Now we get negative 24 is equal to negative 9.80 t. And now divide out the negative 9.80. And hooray, hooray, the time comes out to be positive, which it should. Can't have a negative time here. So do 24 divided by 9.8. And we get a value of 24.5. And I really should use two sig figs, so we'll do 24. 24 seconds. Okay, great, so that's how long it is in the air. And now it says, what is the maximum height attained by the ball? Okay, so again, since we're talking about maximum height, what component is that, X or Y? It should be Y, right? So now um, we have to do this again, and we gotta consider our Y components. So let me do calculation C over here. Now you gotta be careful because we have to, uh, we have to frame the problem appropriately. So take a look at my picture over here. Where in my picture, where's the maximum height? Well, probably would be right here, right? This would be considered the max height, right? And if I were to uh, draw that straight line down, this would be the maximum height. Now it's important because now my frame is from the initial condition to now the maximum height. So my givens or my knowns may change. Keep that in mind. All right, so let's list them all out. The initial velocity in the y direction is still the same. It's still 12 meters per second positive because it's directly up. The final velocity in the y frame, so you gotta ask yourself, what is the final velocity in the y direction all the way at the top here, in the y direction? Well, is it traveling any further up? No. Is it coming down? Well, it's just beginning to come down, right? So it's basically at the point of which it's not moving up nor coming back down. It's like frozen in time for a fraction of a second. So what would be then the velocity if it's frozen in time? Well, that would be zero meters per second, okay? Acceleration in the y direction is still the same. It's still negative 9.80 because it's in free fall. The uh, time, now I can, I can actually do this, right? Because what did we just find the time of before? Well, we found time to be 24 seconds. Well, that was for the whole thing, right? That was for from uh, when it leaves the ground to when it hits the ground. And since the problem is symmetrical, meaning it hits the ground at the same height that it left the ground with, and there are no other forces in the problem, then I know that the point halfway, th halfway through should be the point of maximum height and the time should be half of what I solved for before. So this should be 12 seconds. And now I wanna find the Y value. That's what I don't know. So I got a whole bunch of formulas I can use, right? Um, which we can use uh, a few of them, but actually the one I think I'm gonna use is going to be the uh, fourth one. 
Uh, reason being is because I can use time, but maybe I made a mistake here in my time calculation. I don't want that mistake to propagate into my answer. All right. So let me use the fourth equation. So we got the final velocity in the y direction squared is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction squared plus two times the acceleration in the y direction times time. All right. So the final velocity in the y is zero. The initial was 12. The acceleration was negative 9.80 times t. Oh, excuse me, time, times x. I was, I was stressing that equation and I put in the wrong variable. 2ax. Just seeing if you guys are paying attention, that's all. So 12 squared is going to be 144. Uh, this is going to be negative 19.6x. So add this on over. Right, add 19.6x, that cancels. Now we got 19.6x is equal to 144. And then finally, divide that on out, right? So we got x is equal to 144 over 19.6, 7.3. We'll do two sig figs. So we got 7, 7.3, and that is in meters. So that's how high the ball will reach. So if I go back to here in my picture, right, I do know the y value. Let me just erase it. So the maximum height here now will be y is equal to 7.3 meters. And that would be the answer to part C. Guys, thanks for joining. Hope this helped significantly. And if it did, tell your friends and tell them all to subscribe. Thank you so much.